and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Welcome to episode 11. I'm Jen Liddy, your host today. And I don't know if you remember, but last week I introduced you to this idea of character versus reputation. And I taught that reputation is who people think you are and character is who you think you are. Today, I want to teach you a strategy to help you think about who you are and who you want to be. Why? Because if you learn to accept yourself, then you can like yourself. And if you can like yourself, then you can learn to love yourself. And when that all happens, it helps you move toward your goals much more easily without as much noise in your head. Now, this is important because we're we're rearing up on January. And January is that time of year where everybody decides, this is my big moment. This is the goal I want to reach this year. It's just kind of a reset point for people. And I want to help you decide who you want to be, and how you're going to get there. So the tool I'm teaching you today helps you decide what you'd like to change about yourself. You know, the stuff that you don't like and the stuff you don't want to live with anymore. I'm not talking about the stuff that someone else has asked you to change. I don't care about that because that's not a driver for you. I want you to think about the stuff you want to change for yourself. What I want to teach you today will help you decide what's staying, and what's changing for you. And that's where the good shit starts to happen. So let's go. Here's the deal. About six years ago, I noticed it was like October 1st and a Monday. It was like all the things were happening at the same time. It got me excited for some reason. So on Facebook, I posted, it's a Monday and also the first of the month. What a perfect day to make a change and start again. And it's a fairly positive sentiment, right? But at the time, I wasn't particularly known for being positive in real life. I got comments from my friends like, who are you? And um, are you okay? A couple of people were like, what's going on with you? Where's Jen Liddy? And I have to admit that they kind of stung because it made me question whether I had the right to say something positive since I'd never really been a positive person. My reputation preceded me. People thought I was sarcastic and negative, and frankly, I'd done a lot of stuff to make that an easy thing to think. Also, it was what I thought of myself. It was who I showed up as. But around that time, I really wanted to be different. I wanted to see myself as different. I had started doing some personal development work. I had started teaching college students how to do personal development work, and I really wanted to change my character. I wanted to embody something different. But at that moment, it got me thinking, do I have the right to change? Do I get to decide who I want to be next? Or do I just have to live up to this reputation that I've created and that obviously people think of me? And so I want to ask you, what do you think about this? Can we become something else if we want to? So I came up with this hypothetical situation. I want you to imagine that you've stayed exactly the same person you've been since middle school. You're taller now with a better taste in designer jeans and you've traded wine coolers for bottled wine or boxed wine. I don't care what kind of wine you drink. But anyway, I want you to imagine that you have not changed at all since middle school. Now, for me, that would mean I'm a 48-year-old, insecure, grown woman who gossips slays with sardonic wit, and never trusts that any of her relationships are secure. It also would mean I'm jealous, petty, and fearful. And every time I think about that person as an adult, the middle school me as an adult, it just feels awful. 
And I bet that you know people, grown up people like this, people who haven't changed since middle school. I sure as hell know people like that. But what I decided was it's just not who I wanted to continue to be. And there's so many reasons why. Number one, it's exhausting. Do you know how much time and effort it takes to keep up that facade, to be ruthlessly sarcastic and to keep track of the gossip or the lies that I created? It's exhausting and wearing to constantly assess whether your relationships are trustworthy. But it's also, number two, shitty. It feels like absolute shit inside your body and your mind to be petty, jealous, and fearful. You've probably felt like this in some point in your life, right? I mean, you know how awful negative feelings are inside your body. Now, I could go on and on, but mostly... I didn't like who I was, and I wanted to stop giving so much time and energy away to it, and I wanted to feel more calm and peaceful. So let's get back to reality. Let's spend a moment thinking about all the ways you have changed. How have you changed? And here's a bigger, more important question. Have you allowed yourself to change? I ask this because something happens to us as adults. We resist the idea that we're allowed to change. We think we're done developing at 18 and then at 25, and then at 30. And then all of a sudden, life feels kind of meh when there's really nothing even wrong. We feel like we're creeping up on numbers like 35, 40, 49, 57, 70. And instead of feeling excited about developing and learning, we feel dread. We ask ourselves, is this all there is? Now, this is where most of my clients come to me because they're feeling like, I want something more. Is this all there is? And it's because we haven't done the developing that we need. We have not allowed what's inside to really come out. We haven't allowed our character to grow. Sometimes we stay stuck on the idea of our reputation. We think, well, what will people think of me? What will people say if I do this thing I've never done before? And I want you to know you're not done developing your character if you don't want to be. You don't have to be a slave to your almighty reputation that you think you have to live up to. Imagine if you really were done changing. Imagine if this was it. If who you are right now is who you're going to be in the rest of your life. How boring. How restrictive. You get to show up as who you want to be, but you've got to know what you want. And that is where your character comes into play. Who do you think you are and who do you want to be? We ask our kids this all the time. What do you want? What do you want for Christmas? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want for dinner, for God's sakes? But we never ask ourselves what we want, who we want to become. You are still becoming who you want to be. That's how you save off that meh, the exhaustion, the self-judgment. That's how we gain energy and create the things that we want. We keep developing and we keep growing. And you're allowed to do that even if the people around you raise their eyebrows, even if they make snarky comments and put it on your social media pages. What do you want to be? It's a great question. Think about it because I bet you know or you have an inkling. And if you don't know, That's because you're not willing to listen to what your brain wants to tell you. Your very next question, once you answer, what do you want to be? Is how, but, but how do I get where I want to go? How do I get where I want to be? And this question reminds me of one of my favorite childhood book characters, uh, Ramona Quimby. She's a character from Beverly Cleary's books. And I read these religiously in the 70s and 80s. I devoured them. And I liked Ramona Quimby because she was a rule ba- breaker. I liked Ramona Quimby because she was a rule breaker and a questioner. She was noisy and demanding. And she was fun. And I secretly wanted to be more like Ramona because I was none of those things. Anyway, Ramona Quimby on her first day of first grade is asked to sit here for the present by her teacher. And she took sit here for the present literally. Squirming Ramona desperately wants the gift she's been promised and refuses to leave her chair for any reason because she's supposed to sit here for the present. She dives into deep mental negotiations with herself about whether it's worthwhile to just sit. 
but she does it for hours and it's absolute agony for her. Now, my experience being present is much like Ramona's, mentally difficult and very noisy. I read this book when I was a kid and then again a few years ago with my son, and I still remember how much I identified with Ramona then and now. Sitting in the present is hard because sometimes it's unpleasant to be present. But if you want to get somewhere different, if you want to be somewhere new, it's absolutely required. When we're present, that's when we become self-aware and reflective. And that can be unpleasant and difficult because we might not want to see the stuff that's coming up. Maybe there's some stuff we don't want to admit to. So why am I asking you to sit here for the present? Because I have found that self-awareness and reflection bring me and my clients a lot of peace. And that's a freaking gift. It helps me see the difference between my reputation and my character Being present helps me understand where to put my time and my energy. It helps me assess whether my current thought or feeling or action is going to be fruitless or get me what I want. It helps me know, am I taking action to appease my reputation or what other people think of me, or am I doing it for my character? Because remember from last week, all we have 100% control over is the relationship we have with ourselves. What we think of ourselves is our character. And knowing that will save you immense time and energy, worrying, overthinking, feeling anxious, and retelling stories that harm you. That is where the peace is. What more could you want for yourself than peace? How would it free you up to know the choices you made served you in some way, even if they were hard, even if you made mistakes? If you, like me, have made mistakes and want peace around them, then this exercise will help you. I've been thinking about the different chapters in my life, the hard, confusing, lonely, unclear times. They're just snippets in my head, like kind of like a disjointed storyboard. So I took some of those snippets and I titled them as chapters. And here are some of them. You can do hard things. The year that almost broke me. The year of yes, it's time to get uncomfortable. The year of no, it's time to create some boundaries. Anti-goals, shit I no longer want to do. A little empathy, being kind is an option. I cannot express to you how much it helped me to containerize these different times in my life. When I reflected on who I used to be and what my reputation was versus how I wanted to show up in the world, and I gave them these titles, I noticed two things. I learned so much from each chapter of who I used to be. And then also the number two thing is each chapter was necessary in order for the next chapter to be written. So as we move into the new year, I bet you're making lots of promises to yourself. And maybe you're worried that some of those promises are being made because you worry about what other people think. Maybe you're looking to completely overhaul your life, or maybe you're tired and just want to stand still for a minute. Here's how to get whatever it is you want. First, remember that in every year, we each have many chapters and they add up to a great story. Decide what's the story you want to write this year. How do you want it to unfold? What will your chapters be? Get present with yourself as you consider this. It might feel uncomfortable, but it's worse to find yourself in the middle of a chapter you didn't want to write because you were so concerned about your reputation. So like Ramona, sit here for the present and decide what you want 2019 to feel like. Writing your story really is your choice. Who do you want to show up as? Who do you want to be? Listen to what shows up. What actions do you need to take? What thoughts do you need to change? Get out of the past and stop worrying about your future. Just decide who you want to be. If you want some more support around this topic, it's time to reach out. Get more time in your life so that you can figure this all out. 2019 is your year, but you have to plan for it. My online accountability coaching group helps women do exactly this by working on three things every single month. Master your time so you can master your mind so you can master your life. It's life-changing and here's why. Are you ready to not give a shit about your reputation anymore? 
Are you ready to dive deep into your character and become who you want to be? We specialize in that. Come on over. You know you can find me at my website, www.jenliddy.com. And the next time I see you will be in the new year. And I can't wait to share with you some new tools for how to get what you want in 2019. I'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.